Hello and welcome back to this uh, second video about 2024. Uh, this one deals with the uh, transits of Mars and their possible influence in our lives. So um, on the 4th of January 2024, Mars will change sign to transit in Capricorn, you see. So it's going to have a very strong effect you know, in the lives of people born under this sign, naturally. But Capricorn represents the um, potential to realize what we want in life. So during this period, which is going to last about six weeks, uh, the uh, energy will be most probably to focus on what we want to achieve. And because it is the uh, beginning of the year, it's a good moment to decide what we're going to achieve during the coming year. And uh, that is what we call the good resolutions and the dreams and projects that you may have uh, to uh, realize during that year. So anyway, the uh, transit is going to last for about six weeks, as I said, and then Mars is going to reach the position here of uh, Pluto. And that's an interesting one as well. As you can see here, Pluto will be uh, at the conjunction with Mars, or Mars will conjunct Pluto rather, on the 14th of February 2024. Now, Mars being a fast planet, it takes two years, you know, to revolve around the zodiac, so we can consider it as a fast object. Whereas Pluto is very, very, very slow. It is actually the slowest one. It takes 248 years to revolve around the zodiac. So Pluto is going to enter in, um, in Aquarius uh, in January on the uh, 20th, 19th, 20th of January. Uh, I've talked about that in the uh, first part of this uh, uh, video. So, on the 14th of January, uh, February, sorry, Mars will trigger the energy of Pluto, which will be already uh, in action in this sign, which is uh, Aquarius. And this is um, the sign that represents society, people, you know. So, it's probably a, a moment um, when we should try and be careful what we do, if we want to change uh, our social environment, for example, if we want to uh, impose something to our social environment, we could become quite radical and we could also fall victim of radical people around us. So let's take it easy on that day, which is Valentine's Day, you know. So let's make it a love rather than a hatred day for us and everything should be fine. But it's an important transit because as you can see, this conjunction here is going to also uh, trigger a discordance with uh, the moon. But then the moon is a very fast object. It's also an important one, but I deal with the influence of the moon um, more or less every two weeks when I talk about the full moon and the new moon periods. So the next transit of Mars is of course when it begins to transit through Pisces and that will be on the 23rd of March for about six weeks. But in this sign here, you can see uh, Saturn and Neptune. So Mars is going to reach the position of Saturn and it will trigger the energy of Saturn and then it will trigger the energy of Neptune. So when it is transiting in Pisces, it's going to uh, have an influence on our potential to realize our dreams. You see, Mars is action. So we need to act naturally according to what we have in mind to obtain what we perceive as well. Intuition is represented by this uh, sign, Pisces. Uh, so if we follow our intuitions, perhaps 
it's going to lead us to something very positive. Uh, the uh, transit of Mars, when it conjuncts Saturn here, it will happen on the 10th of April 2024. And uh, of course, that is going to uh, trigger the energy of Saturn, which is or will be in harmony with, uh, with the Moon and more or less in harmony with Jupiter and Uranus. Jupiter and Uranus are going to conjunct on the 24th of a uh, 21st of April. Uh, I've talked about that in the first part of the video. Uh, and it is, it is a very, very, very important transit. And I believe that April, altogether, April 2024, uh, and probably a part of May, um, are going to be a very, very important period during the year. Very active, very reactive, very tense at times, but things are going to get done. So maybe the climate is going to suffer from this type of configurations, but we'll deal with that. Uh, the fact is that when Mars uh, uh, triggers the energy of Saturn, it is the, the energy of realization. So if, we ha if you have an important project to realize, and if you've worked on it according to what you feel, how you feel about it, and the intuition or inspiration that uh, you have about realizing this project, around the 10th of April, you may have a very good chance of obtaining something very concrete if you make that step forward to obtain what you want. Because the next transit will concern uh, Neptune, which is here. Neptune is going to be met by the uh, transit of Mars on the 28th of April. And then Mars will transit in Aries uh, from the 30th, uh, 30th of April uh, for about six weeks in Aries, which is Mars' sign. But when it reaches uh, the position of Neptune, it's going to trigger something that has to do with our ability to, to feel, to perceive, to perceive the invisible, to connect with the invisible, to connect with the astral plan, perhaps, and to connect with the uh, spiritual dimension of life. If some people may be quite radical as far as religion is concerned, for example, and the arrival of Mars conjunct Neptune may trigger some uh, excessive reactions from these people and their beliefs. So we need to also assess that and perhaps uh, be careful uh, where we are and what we do and how we do it, how we deal with this kind of people. Perhaps if you have that kind of people around you, just you know, try and calm them down rather than uh, fuel their anger eventually or something like that could, that could eventually lead to a... Uh, a, 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 a decisive action that may they may regret afterwards, but uh, it may be too late. You see what I mean? So it is important to take note of that, especially because on that day the Moon is going to create a discordance with Neptune. And on that very day, the 28th of uh, April, uh, we could be uh, in uh, in a situation that we don't understand, it's just going to be something that we feel, but it's not going to be something that we can think about. We may not give ourselves enough time to think about. So if we act too impulsively on the basis of an, uh, an intuition or a presumption, we could make a mistake. So just bear that in mind so that we don't make or you don't make that mistake. Then Mars is going to transit in, uh, in Aries where it is going to meet with uh, Charon, see? And that will be on the 30th of May 2024. Uh, before that, Mars would have had uh, a conjunction with the North Lunar Node. 
And as I said earlier in the first video, the North Lunar Node represents that toward which we should be tending to go. And Aries is the first sign, it is the I am sign. So the energy put into the, uh, your will to uh, become individual uh, and to become someone rather than to remain who you are through the group or your couple, perhaps your any kind of important relationship or partnership and so on. We want to be ourselves. And that is going to be the motto in 2024, to uh, realize what we can realize by ourselves and make sure that we put ourselves forward and say, there I am, you know, appreciate me for what I am and uh, stop telling me what to do. I know who I am. You don't have to tell me who I am and so on and so forth. But without aggressiveness, you know, without conflict if possible. But Mars in Aries could trigger some conflicts, of course. Uh, so this period here, uh, the, uh, I would say the, the, the second fortnight in, in May, could be a very tense moment. And Karen represents health. So we'll need to assess that as well to make sure that there is no problem when Mars reaches uh, Karen, because that could trigger a sudden health issue. And then Mars is going to carry on and it will reach uh, Uranus. But before it reaches Uranus, it's going to transit in Taurus from the 9th of June 2024 for about six weeks. Taurus is the sign that represents the good things of life. So during this period, we are going to be more motivated to uh, take advantage of the good things of life. It could be food, it could be money, it could be anything that you like and appreciate. But Mars represents our tendency at times to, to go too fast, you know, to, to want too much, too suddenly and to react too suddenly to preserve, to protect, to retain what we have. And that could trigger some conflicts as well. So when Mars reaches the position of Uranus, which is here, then of course what we want to change could be changed suddenly. Action is represented by Mars. So we may be really motivated to, to do something, to obtain what we want, and to impose that change. But let's not make it too radical once again. Because Uranus represents the uh, type of reaction that we could have that is very unexpected. And it could also represent what could happen unexpectedly around us. And we could fall victim of that sudden change or sudden surge of uh, the energy of Mars, which represents tension. So a sudden surge of st tension may be difficult to handle. And you see, Uranus is on that day, whoa, uh, be in opposition with the Moon. And the Moon is going to carry on during that day uh, to impose something, emotions. The Moon can trigger also something in us that could be linked to the desire or the need, the necessity to change, radically change. And the change that may occur could last forever. It could have a, such a long-lasting repercussion that it will last until the um, end of your life. So it's very important to take note of it. There is here what we call a trine with uh, Pluto, but it is a false aspect. So it's not going to be very strong, but it is there to show us 
that we can regenerate through the change. But the change need to be, needs to be conducted in a proper way, without excessiveness, without impulsiveness, without aggressiveness. That is very important to remember that. Because there is here, uh, you see this Mercury is in discordance with this configuration here, with this conjunction. And Mercury represents our brains, you know. So the way we think, the way we move as well, is represented by Mercury. Communication and the tools of communication. So it's a day when we should be careful if we need to drive, for example, to somewhere uh, and if we, if we need to discuss something, to debate on a very important subject that could make us quite nervous, fidgety, reactive, angry, whatever, you know. Uh, we need to be very careful on that day, that's for sure. There will be a beneficial link here with the sun, which may be there to put some light, fresh light, on the subject so that we can see it more clearly and then perhaps deal with it more clearly as well and more efficiently. But still, I will personally be very careful on that day, the day before as well and the day after because the influence is going to last for quite a little while and um, it's, it's a very strong influence. It is representing our strong will to change. So what is it that you want to change? I've already asked this question in the first part of the video because Jupiter is going to reach the position of Uranus as I said earlier on the 21st of April and that is going to trigger something in us that has to do with the will and the potential to change. But let's not make that change too radical or if it is or if it has to be radical, well, let's prepare it, you know, instead of just rushing into it as soon as we feel fit. Then the uh, planet Mars is going to carry on turning around the zodiac and it's going to reach Jupiter, of which I've just talked about. Now, Jupiter is in Gemini, or will be then in Gemini. And you see the Moon is here, it's still around. And Saturn is there as well, in discordance, and Venus is in discordance as well. So it's a moment when Jupiter represents the positive side of your personality. Enthusiasm, you know? So don't be too enthusiastic on that particular day, the day before, the day after, but on that particular day it's even more important of course because the moon is there. And the moon represents our emotions and our emotions can really influence our actions and reactions as well. So Saturn represents what is kind of blocking us and what we want to achieve. Uh, the progress, the success that we are after is represented by Jupiter. But Saturn is blocking. What is blocking that progress that you want? Well, it's for you to tell. I don't know. But on the other side, there is Venus. So obviously it's something that is very dear to you. It may have to do with your love life, for example. It may also have to do with anything that you care for or anyone you care for. And on that day, the uh, decision or the reaction that you may have due to the fact that you are eager to obtain something, whereas you know that there is something or someone holding you back. That is going to make you perhaps angry. You and me as well. Uh, we'll all be concerned by this type of configuration. So it may become a source of mistake because Mars will trigger the positive energy of Jupiter. But 
in, a, in, a, in such a way that Jupiter is not going to be reasonable anymore. Saturn will try to make it reasonable. So Saturn is there to make our um, desire to obtain what we want to obtain uh, reasonable. But are we going to listen to the energy of Saturn or to the voice of Saturn, the voice of wisdom? Perhaps, perhaps not. Because we will be too eager to satisfy ourselves with what we uh, want on the spot, on that very day. And perhaps exactly when the Moon is in opposition with this conjunction here. Uh, I will talk about that anyway because I uh, analyze the transits of the Moon every fortnight. So uh, I will be coming back on this type of configuration and I will give you the precise day and the time. Of course, it will be universal time. You will have to correct it according to your place of residence. And then uh, Mars is going to transit in Cancer from the, from the 5th of September 2024 for about six weeks. And uh, at the end of this transit, which is going to trigger a lot of personal needs about family, about uh, the uh, close environment and um, family matters and anything that has to do with the country as well, with where we live actually. That is going to become very important and we could become quite defensive and motivated to uh, uh, impose something on our family or to make something uh, out of what we have such as projects uh, you know, um, concerning our family or our residence as well. So then by the end of the transit Mars will create an opposition with Pluto and then it will transit in uh, Leo and it's going to last quite a while this transit in Leo because Mars is going to retrograde in Leo and it will come back in Cancer and go back again in Leo. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But the opposition here with Pluto is going to trigger the energy of Pluto and which is the energy of regeneration, reconstruction, you know. Uh, so Pluto being in harmony with Uranus, in harmony here with the north, with the south moon and node, therefore in harmony with the north one as well, in harmony with Neptune uh, and in harmony with Mercury, that is, in my opinion, a moment to choose to talk about it, uh, to move and do what needs to be done about regenerating something, transforming, changing in a very deep type of manner. And uh, the dreams that are represented by Neptune as well could become something quite important. And the spiritual dimension of life, never forget about that, it can really help avoid uh, a lot of problems in this, uh, in this world. Knowing that Pluto, as you can see it here, is at 29 degrees and 46 minutes in Capricorn. It's on the verge of changing sign to settle in Aquarius for 20 years. So Mars could trigger the energy of Pluto according to what Pluto is going to lead or bring us for about 20 years in our societies. It is complete regeneration of our society. As we know it today, it's going to be much different, completely different, completely reorganized by uh, the end of the transit in Aquarius, which is uh, 2044. You know, it's going to last for 20 years. So, the transit of Mars, as you can see it, Mars is going to retrograde in Leo on the 7th of December until the 24th of February when it will have gone back here in Cancer. And then it will 
uh, carry on and uh, transit Leo again in 2025. But of course, I'll tell you about that when I make the video next year for 2025, naturally. So now, this is the end of this second part of the video, all about Mars. I hope it's going to be useful to you in some way. Come back to it, you know, during the year to sort of uh, uh, get things back into your mind according to the transits of Mars and the videos that I will make uh, on a regular basis about the new moon and the full moon because the moon will have a very strong impact as well on the influence of Mars and the influences of other planets around the, uh, the chart. So take it easy, have a nice end of 2023. Today is the 3rd of August, so we've still got a few months to go before 2024, but we need to get ready for a year that is going to be very special, very important for many of us. So now for the third video, I will talk about the uh, retrogradations of uh, Mercury.